Hi, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film, Lisbon Beat, playing as part of 11th European Union Human Rights Film Days. The film is directed by Rita Maya and Vasco Viana, and today we are happy to be talking to one of the directors of the film, Rita Maya, who is joining us from London. Hi, Rita. Hi, nice. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for joining. Uh, Rita, you're an internationally known DJ, broadcaster, curator, record collector, and creative director. Lisbon Beat is your uh, first feature film as a director. The film tells us how Afro-Portuguese identities influence the vibrant music scenes in Lisbon. Uh, so could you let us know where the inspiration for this film is coming from and what are you trying to address uh, with the film? Um, yes, so uh, it, it was a project I wanted to do for a long time. I had done short pieces uh, around the subject of the music and the records found in Lisbon, the city where I grew up. Um, and at the same time, I was playing the music in London and trying to uh, sort of promote it, get people to listen to it outside of its borders. And, um, and so eventually I started recording um, interv not interviews, conversations with uh, some of the producers because obviously it's, it is a small uh, music scene so everyone's kind of connected and so I started um, uh, just recording interviews to form a base um, again, not, not interviews, conversations everywhere from restaurants, studios, etc. Some of those things are actually in the film um, they end up being at radio shows and et cetera. And then I just kind of, um, yeah, started more time in Lisbon. I always obviously did because it's a city where I grew up. But, and so I always came for music related things, radio shows and uh, residencies, DJing, et cetera. And so I started spending a bit more time here and eventually sort of formed the project uh, that, um, that was a more structured way to to talk about this music and who does the music, the people behind it, and a little bit about the city as well. You know, the the different uh, territories in the city, the different influences, and the people who who live here and who make this music. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we see that there are too many contributors in the film, too many musicians, uh, and I'm sure that it it took a while to complete the whole film. And I, I'm just wondering how long did it take to complete the whole filming process and, and the post-production, everything? Yeah, it was it was a long time because as I said, well, I had my first year just recording a sort of uh, conversations and uh, um, writing ideas, a lot of a lot of schemes and etc. because I hadn't done a feature film before and also thinking of ideas on how to do it, not just technically, but um, well, obviously the main thing was the idea of how this is going to become a film. So uh, all the characters and uh, the territories and all that, um, the music genres, etc. cetera, uh, but, also, um, but also thinking about obviously funding and um, taking time for it and all that. So that, that was the first tier then uh, second year, so I came to London to Lisbon to film a bit and I'd go back. Uh, second year was a bit like that as well. So I had, I actually ended up producing a couple of music videos for um, British artists in Lisbon. And so I took that time to also, um, to also record some stuff for the documentary every time I came to play, et cetera. And so I did it kind of slowly because uh, I needed that time. And then, so I guess in the third year was more structured because I had a way to do it already. I had applied for funding and I, I was awarded by, you know, it was amazing that that happened. And uh, so I made a plan, but I, I knew that uh, it wasn't going to be like, okay, I'll um, make one month for filming and I'll do all of the conversations in places at that time, because I didn't think that was gonna work. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to kind of let the the film talk a little bit and you know see what um, what I came up with at the same time and um, and so I guess three years three years four years, but yeah 
Um, so um, there is this prologue in the beginning of the film about the corrugated villages where the distinctive Lisbon beats uh, or batidas have um, emerged from. Could you tell us more about the historical background of these corrugated uh, villages? Um, yes, yeah, so it's, it was very hard to um, put a little bit of a history uh, context in the film. I found that really hard because the beginning of the film will always kind of tell you what the film is about. And uh, it wasn't about the, that, but uh, I kind of felt like you needed to have something there to talk a little bit about the background of the neighborhoods, the actual territory where the music is made and the people and where those influences come from, etc. And so this was end up after six months in um, in uh, in the studio to uh, to edit and put the film together, together with uh, Claudia, who's an amazing editor. Um, we came up with, you know, it, it's something that I wanted to do from the beginning, have a, a certain information about the specific, the immigration flux, et cetera, and, uh, and the housing relocations, et cetera. Um, but, uh, but it ended up being like just a short bit. And, um, but yeah, I didn't want the film to be about that. The film is about mm -hmm. the people, but uh, it's, it is obviously very important to, to, because the whole music has uh, obviously an influence of like electronic music from the US and uh, as, as much as uh, urban uh, music, but also a very strong influence from countries that are linked, uh, countries in Africa that are linked to the city through our history and people. So, um, so first of all, Lisbon, uh, I, I guess people forget that Lisbon in some ways is kind of closer to Africa than in Lisbon, it, than, in, in, than Europe in many ways. Lisbon was actually a, a, a colony itself of the people of North Africa for almost 500 years. So there's a lot of that obviously architecture and in the sounds and, uh, and in us, in the people. Um, but that was, um, that was obviously a long time ago. And then, so there was a flux of immigration uh, after the 500 years of colonization, as we know all that dark history, um, there was a, a big flux of immigration uh, in the 70s to Lisbon uh, from both uh, African people from uh, Angola, Mozambique, Cab Cap Verde, São Tomé, Príncipe, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, those places that are linked here, as well as other places like also Portuguese people came and etc. Um, but um, what happened was uh, Portugal was uh, like, I guess they didn't really prioritize the, the relocation of people. So there was a program to relocate people, but it wasn't planned very well in my view. So uh, people were put in places, well, the houses were built in places where there was nothing, usually just like big hills with loads of wind, you know, where no one wanted to build. And there was nothing, there was no infrastructures, no, um, no schools, no jobs, no shops, no roads almost, you know, so no transport links and stuff. So it took a very long time until that actually was made. So first uh, people were put in places that were kind of quite isolated in some ways, you know. Um, mm. And uh, that's a little bit of the, of the background it's like obviously a, a big a big uh that would be a whole different documentary to just talk about that yeah, so, yeah thank you that, so much that does um, influence the yeah <laughs> thank you so much and back to the main focus of the film the people uh, we see that in the film that portuguese speaking african musicians struggle to establish themselves as artists in lisbon under the shadow of racism, difficult conditions, and identity str struggles. Uh, obviously, you spent a lot of time with them together, these musicians, witnessing all of these difficulties. Could you let us know what were the main challenges you had during the production of the film? Uh, main challenges, uh, I guess, was probably like choosing content and also like being ready to film when things were happening. I wanted to film everything to then just put something together. Uh, and also like obviously as a document, you know, 
in a documentary, you can put together a plan and write a, a, almost like a script, but then when, when the story goes and things happen, conversations happen, then uh, different subjects uh, emerge. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of left it a bit loose to see what, um, uh, even though I had a plan and I wanted to talk about a few things that, um, uh, that some of my friends, producers had, um, had talked about. In, in prior conversations off camera. So I wanted to talk about that. And so kind of I directed a little bit the conversations that way. And then a lot of the things were good. A lot of the things were not good. So then we repeat a bit and until we kind of got to a, uh, to a, to a bit, uh, to like uh, a bit where you're happy with what you have. Um, also there's a limit how, how long you can film, obviously. With a budget and all that, and uh, and then just also um, to see if you have enough content to film the nucleus of like a film, you know, a story there. Uh, so yeah, did that answer? <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely, fantastic. Thank you for joining the session. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me and, and for everyone that's watching and has an interest in, in this. I hope it inspires um, some viewers and, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's thank you. Thank you for sharing these stories of these remarkable musicians with us uh, and joining the session. Thank you. <laughs>